One thing about the Dellinger, so we, we talked to Dellinger, but we didn't really get to give our takes on the Dellinger situation. And one of the reasons why this commitment is so huge, uh, first off, traditionally Louisiana doesn't always make the most dominant offensive lineman, but especially if you look around the state right now, there is a dearth of O-line. Like, it, 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 I think the highest-ranked offensive lineman in the state of Louisiana checks in at number 886. The 886 recruit. That was in Brody Miller's article in The Athletic today. Gross. Uh, I'm not saying that somebody won't, like, if you take a losing guy, that he won't rise to the top because you know, people do that all the time. It, it, it's just that it's maybe not something that you want to bank on. So in, in a year where talent is down, going to Michigan and getting a guy is huge for Craig, but it's also huge for another reason. Remember, Jordy, we've talked to Jack about this. we talked to Coach O about this. Jack Marucci, the head LSU athletic trainer, who loves numbers. He loves analytics. They've been researching and trying to compile data on what region produces the best players positionally, mm -hmm. and not just in college, but like who goes on to have the longest NFL careers. And what they found is that, and it's no surprise, the Midwest makes badass offensive linemen. Wisconsin, right? Exactly, all that. And so they want to get involved there. And now uh, James Craig lands his second big four-star recruit out of Michigan specifically. But then when you look at Charles Turner, uh, Anthony Bradford, and now Dellinger, you look at three guys, because Turner came from Ohio, that, you, that, that you've got from that region. So it's, it's, it's a feather in Craig's cap. And it's also, once again, LSU applying, putting theory into action, right? Looking at the analytics, looking at this data, and instead of being like, oh, that's interesting, and then sticking with what's comfortable, being like, no, we need to make a concerted effort to, to to work this, to work on this, and they did that, and now they got a big-time top 100 tackle out of the state of Michigan. And you also love to see that these are now classes that they're stacking on top of each other and bringing in top offensive line talent. I mean, remember, you've got Marcus Doomerville, yep. you've got Marlon Martinez, you've got Xavier Hill that are a part of, of this class that's already on campus working out for Moffitt right now. And, in, and look, you've heard some of those names Xavier Hill, when, all, when, when Ogeron went down the offensive line depth chart a couple of weeks back on off the bench, he had him scheduled in a backup at a couple of spots. He also had Doomerville as possible a, a potential player at left tackle that could come into play if, if, if things don't work out with Dare Rosenthal. And then you look at Marlon Martinez. He's a guy that could maybe compete with the interior spots and, and possibly even center. So, so, so James Craig has done a, a phenomenal job. And Dellinger talked about the relationship that he had with Craig in the process. And it looks like Craig is just kind of setting up a recruiting season where this year, 2020, the class, those three names we just gave you, a lot of those guys, all those, you know, the, 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 the majority of those guys are inside guys. Doomerville can play outside, but it looks like that the emphasis now on this class is getting those outside protectors. Yeah. Is and getting a guy like Dellander, and then they've got a five star on, on, on the list, and Tristan Lee, who is out of Virginia, um, and, and Lee ranks as the nation's number three offensive tackle. Uh, everybody's after him. LSU, Clemson, Oklahoma, Alabama, Penn State, Virginia Tech are in the mix. But it seems like from people that are covering his recruitment pretty close that behind closed doors that LSU is doing work. And it's going to come down to LSU Clemson from people that are close Ooh. to the scene. So you get a guy like uh, you get a guy like Dellinger who's committed, who told us in hour one that the, co that the he commitment... He sounded very firmly well, the committed. Well, the commitment was, we asked, I said, is it 100% secure? He said, absolutely, and he'll be here in spring. Uh, he's going to graduate early. He's in the group text. You, you you get you get Dellinger, and then you get Tristan Lee, who we just said number three offensive lineman, offensive tackle in the country, who seems like LSU's trending in the right direction. You stack those classes on top of each other, and now you'll be hearing Ogeron go down the depth chart on offensive line like he was on defensive line a couple of weeks back, where he's just name after name after name after name. That, that they can count on. I mean, they're just yeah. stacking depth. And and it's um and and when you when you look at what is the one element that LSU has kind of missed in this recent era, like when's the last time you had a dominant offensive tackle? Was it Lyle? Um, yes, it would have been Lyle Collins. And so what you're talking about seven like six seven years ago now? I mean, he was in the 2011 recruiting. class. Uh, he was in the 2011 recruiting class. Did he leave after three years? Either way, you, you, it, it it's been. Over half a decade. He stayed four. Should have been a first-round pick. Yeah. Everything, everybody remembers what happened on draft day, but he's made his money. And, and yes, I mean, he was he's probably the last dominant guy that you could pay. It's kind of ironic that you could go 15-0 and 0 and, and put up the stats that you did without a great left tackle. That is not the norm. It just shows how good you were everywhere else. But 
Yeah, so if, if, if you're talking about like kind of last hurdles that – if, if El- like things to fix from when Ogeron took over the program, right? There was a lack of D line depth. They've really addressed that. There's a lack of offensive line depth. Well, they've addressed that. And obviously, everywhere else positioning, they look very strong, right? Quarterback. We mentioned the fact that they have two top 100 recruits lined up in successive years for the first time ever. And, and so, kind of this 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 last hill to climb would be getting that badass five star offensive tackle. And and, and Dellinger's right there. Like Dellinger's. A top 100 tackle, so so you could you could argue that you've already crested that hill, uh, but 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 they continue to address positional recruiting um, very well, and, and as you said, they're now a top 10 class with this, with the least amount of players committed. So it's a very quality over quantity class at this moment, and I like that because it allows you a little latitude, right? You're not you're you're not really they can go a lot of different directions as they put these core pieces together and really, really cement them. Yeah. And one thing that we didn't talk about earlier this week, when we were announcing the news on Cameron Jackson, who was a longtime LSU commit from North Louisiana, um, that that was battling some academic stuff as far as getting qualified and being able to be a part of the class. He graduated earlier this week from Haynesville, uh, but ended up committing and signing his letter of intent for Memphis. So now you've got an extra scholarship, you know, and, 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 and O is, has done Ogeron and, and the staff have done a, a tremendous job of of being able to to find somebody, identify somebody that they may need for a, a specific spot and have a and have a scholarship for. And now you've got an extra one where you can either sign another player in the twenty twenty one class, you can get the gra- graduate transfer, uh, in, in which they've had so much success, or you can find somebody out there in the market that that that's just uh, that may fit in what you're trying to do. So. Um, they, they, they're on fire from a recruiting standpoint as far as the message goes and how, how relevant they are in, in the homes. And, I mean, even a guy that's up in Michigan and here in Dellinger talk about the one-on-one relationship that he built, not only with, with Ogeron, the head coach, but James Craig, the offensive line coach, and, and what that does in the feeling for the program as far as the, re, and, the, the relationship goes. It, it, was, it was an interesting conversation with Dellinger, and I think it's kind of an insight, an inside look to – to kind of how, how how much momentum is moving in the direction of LSU football as far as recruiting goes. I mean, you're going up against Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State in their backyard. In their backyard, in Big Ten country. I mean, this kid is from uh, he's from Michigan. He's from Clarkstown, Michigan. Um, and you know, I mean, he was talking about his high school uniform. It, it is kind it of is mimicked. the Michigan. It's, <laughs> it's 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 the Michigan uniform. I mean, it's got the Wolverine helmet. Who has LSU's? Does Hanville still have very LSU like um, setup? Lutcher. Uh, Lutcher. There you go. Yeah, it'd be like somebody choosing Ohio State over LSU Jarvis when LSU Landry. really wanted him right there. Like Jarvis Landry yeah. choosing Ohio State. 